Hello, uh, Paul Beck with again, and I'm just continuing my series of videos on the Arctic uh, sea ice. And uh, Shackleton is a little bit annoyed at me because um, one of the things I bought, you know, I did I did stock up on some tinned food and stuff, um, uh, you know, about a month ago or so. Just added a little bit to the groceries each time, and you know, love all these different flavors of tuna and of course uh you know as soon as i he, he he knows when i open a tin you know when i peel off the top of the tin and dig into it i mean he knows he's right there and uh you know he expects to get some and uh you know i give him treats from time to time but i didn't so he's off sulking somewhere didn't want anything to do with uh, being on the video camera today so um the last thing I was explaining of Zach Labe's uh, plots here is the, this is the uh, sea ice sickness in the Arctic, the trends um, through the different years um, from, from 79, the beginning of the satellite era to, to 2020. And you can see how the, uh, you know, the, the extent peaks here, the volume peaks about in early May and the thickness uh, peaks a little bit later than that. But you can see the trends. All of these things are trending rapidly downwards towards a blue ocean event. Okay, Arctic temperatures. Okay, so this is the daily Arctic temperature. Here's where we are for 2020. Um, and what you'll see is, remember that the, the, the extent peaks in Usually it's about mid-March. It peaked in very early March this time. Um, and then, as I showed you in the previous video, the, um, the volume peaks, um, you know, the end of April towards early May, and then the thickness uh, peaks slightly after that. Um, and so they're still growing because the temperature is still well above zero. Um, well, below zero, rather, below that minus 1.8 degrees when seawater freezes. So they're still thickening. Uh, but as the Arctic temperatures increase, there's a lot of variation. It's, it's generally much warmer than the mean. This is the average from 1958 to 2002, the white line. This is for regions above 80 degree north latitude, so the high Arctic. So you can see the warming that occurs here and the warming that occurs in the fall, okay? And then in the summer, um, it's pegged close to zero because there's sea ice left. But as soon as that sea ice disappears in the Arctic, as soon as there's no sea ice, you'll expect this curve not to flatten out like this. This curve will come up here, you know, and come down here. So it, the Arctic will, will warm extremely quickly uh, once there's no sea ice left. The only reason this is pegged close to zero is because of the, the sea ice. We can talk about something called freezing degree days. So it's a sum, it's a cumulative sum of the average temperature for a day um, of plus minus 1.8 degrees Celsius, okay? Or minus 1.8 degrees Celsius minus temperature average. So it's the average temperature during the day is minus 1.8, minus and minus is plus. You're going to get zero freezing de de degree days from, from that day. If the average temperature for the whole day, you know, the average, which is the max minus min, if it's, say, minus 2.8 Celsius, then minus minus is plus 2.8, so you're going to get plus 1 degree Celsius times over the full day. So that'll be one freezing degree day. And you get the idea. So it's basically keeping track, a cumulative track of the number of days below freezing. And you can see, you know, the winter comes on, the totals start adding up. And here's where we are in 2020. And you can see, you know, winter 2017 to 2018, uh, winter 2016 to 2017. This is the, the mean from 1958 to 2002, the blue line. Okay, so the freezing, de so the ice is, is not, the freezing degree days, the cumulative is not as, and this is over 80 degree north latitude, it's less and less and less, trending to less and less and less. And if you take the anomaly to this blue curve, then you can see it portrayed like this. So here, here we are 2019 to 2020, 
So the anomaly, there's less and less freezing degree days. Of course, the ice is not forming in the winter as thickly, no surprise there. And then once you reach the, um, once this flattens out, then it's the, you, you talk about thawing degree days, the degree, okay, um, and that's the temperatures are now above minus 1.8, so things start thawing. And if you take the cumulative thing, it, you get nothing till about end of May, and then you start getting a rise in the high Arctic, so this is this region, greater than or equal to 80 degrees north, and you get thawing degree days, and you can see that um, they're, they're, they follow this type, type of trend here. Here's where we are in 2020, this is 2019, and this is um, the 1958 to 2002 average. Okay, so the thawing degree days, uh, you know, is close to the the average, but we would, and we would expect this to occur until, bang, we lose Arctic sea ice, and then all that energy that goes into melting ice will go into heating the air above the ice and the ocean, and this will, curve will then continue up like this until it peaks and comes down when there's no Arctic sea ice. So the Arctic sea ice going is a huge, um, tipping point, if you like. Okay, these are Arctic temperatures from a bunch of different um, reanalysis data sets, and you can see, so 1960s, we were down to about minus two here, um, relative to the climatological baseline, 1981 to 2010 is the baseline, the average. So relative to that, we were minus two here in the 60s, and now we're you know, we hit as high as three. This is a five degree um, increase in the space of, uh, you know, uh, this is 55, 50, 55 years, five degree increase. So the Arctic temperatures have risen as much as a degree Celsius, uh, per, as much as a degree Celsius per, per decade. You know, the overall temperature is increasing about 0 0.2 degrees Celsius per decade. And this is why, you know, if we warmed, say, half a degree from the lack of aerosols and the change in cloud structure, that would be equivalent to, um, you know, that, that would be a, hu a huge factor equivalent to about two and a half decades of overall warming. You know, two and a half times 0.2 is about 0.5. You know, 25 years of warming equivalent for lack of aerosols. Um, and change of clouds due to the coronavirus-19 um, industrial shutdowns around the planet for as long as they last. Okay, um, this is some other data sets um, showing Arctic temperatures here. I can see my neighbor on the roof blowing leaves off with his leaf blower. I hope he doesn't get a Darwin Award by stepping too close to the edge. Um, Okay, so again, this is a couple different models. Again, it's showing about from minus, minus, uh, you know, 2.7 or something to plus three, you know, 5.7 rise in, you know, um, but this is from 1900 uh, to, uh, pr to present, okay? So, you know, we could, uh, but previously we were looking at 1960, you know, just looking at this region, the rise here. Uh, but now we're looking at this overall rise. So, so huge things have happened since the 60s. You know, just compare these two, these two plots with the two time scales. This is the 925 hexapascal temperature. Now, 925 hexapascal, it's about, it's about 1,000 hexapascals or millibars on the surface. Um, 1014 is a standard, typical standard number. So just over a thousand. 925, we're up about a kilometer in the atmosphere. So this is how the temperature has actually warmed, uh, you know, at that particular altitude. And this is the anomalies over the Arctic. If we look at the air temperature over the Arctic and we look at the sea ice extent over the Arctic, um, this is the annual mean sea ice extent and the annual air temperature anomalies for all of the different years. You can see the, the warming. We go from uh, 79 here, so it's minus 
you know, eight to, uh, you know, plus two. It's about four degrees or so warming. And again, the differences are, this is uh, defining the Arctic as over 67 degrees north. Okay, we have to always, you have to always be wary as to whether this is, you know, is this 80 degree north, north of 80 degrees, north of 67, how do you define the Arctic? Because there's different ways. So this is north of 67 degrees and north, um, you know, the rise in temperature and the drop in the sea ice. Okay, um, you know, and clearly, you know, this is actually, if you draw a line through here, this is actually even, uh, the drop is quicker than, than linear. This is an interesting way of looking at air temperatures ranked by month. So the hottest, for, so for example, if we look at the 111 here, September, October, November of 2016 was the hottest ever. And then January, February, March, you know, look at this year here. 2016, very strong El Nino. And, uh, you know, here's the ranking here. So January, a bit cooler in the Arctic, but we're still getting ice massacred. Okay, uh, so now let's look at a couple other things uh, that Zach's put together. Changing, changing, changes in the timing of spring. So this is climatological. This is when the first, uh, average first leaf index when the leaves start appearing on the trees, um, this is the, you know, in this region, it's in January, um, this region more March, April, May, and so on. And these are the anomalies in one year. So we're getting leaf out happening. And, and Zach was looking into that with his research. Um, effects from sea ice thickness loss, so projections of the atmospheric response. He, he looked at that. So you can read his specific research um, on loss of sea ice thickness. Okay, just touching on it to just show you that it's there. Um, sea ice variability and quasi -biennial, biennial oscillations were also looked at. Now, I'd highly recommend uh, that you, if you're on Twitter, if you're not on Twitter, join Twitter, okay? It's very, very useful. Follow me, you know, you'll figure out how to use it. It's very easy to join. You know, but these are some tweets from Zach. So loss of thicker sea ice, um, okay, from 26, 1979 to 2016, and the ice less than 1.5 meters is massed out, mass black. So this is ice that is 1.5 meters and thicker over time. So you can see you know, as you go through the years, we get less and less and less uh, thick ice. Um, I'll just touch on a couple different things. I've shown you a lot of these different plots. This is very interesting. Uh, if you haven't seen this, this is the, basically we're showing the, looking at the jet streams here. So this is latitude. So this is a jet stream in the Northern hemisphere, the, 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 the jet stream in the Southern hemisphere. You get a polar jet and a subtropical jet. Uh, and you can see how strong the jet is here, um, you know, as we cycle through the month. So this is Southern Hemisphere. This is Northern Hemisphere. So Southern Hemisphere, okay. So you can see how the jet moves latitude over the year and also how it strengthens and weakens in each of the different hemispheres. Okay, and the behavior of the jet stream is, of course, completely determined by the temperature gradient to between the Arctic and the lower latitude regions. This is temperature anomalies, October to December, from 79 to now, and you can see the very strong El Nino year, huge temperature anomalies, huge heat in the Arctic. This is October to December. You know, here we are in 2019, 2018 and so on, but you can see the red appearing. This is a record sea ice minimum year. This is the record overall sea ice minimum year, and 2019 was also very low, but you can see the effects of the El Nino here. Okay, and there's loads and loads of stuff, so make sure you follow Zach, but also follow me on Twitter. And now I'm going to move to predicting the future of ice. I've looked at where ice is now, and now when we when it will a blue ocean event occur, please tune in for my next uh, videos in this series. Thanks for listening.